Hey, what's going on, everybody? God bless you guys. It's Monday. Come on, y'all. It's Monday. It's a new week. Glory be to Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Come on, somebody. You have a lot to be thankful for. You have a lot to be grateful for. You have a lot uh, to, to praise God for. You have so much to give thanks unto the Lord for, for breath in your lungs, for, for life in your body. The fact that you woke up this morning, you need to give God praise. The fact that, that, that you were healthy, you need to give God praise. The fact and those that are believing God for a miracle, you still need to give God praise because by his stripes and the wounds of our Christ, he is healing you because you were healed because of the atonement of what Jesus did for you. Even before he went to the tree, he was paying it all for you and me. So you stay, you, you, you stay in faith and you continue to speak to that. You, you speak to that situation. You, you tell that situation, uh-uh, God's word is what's going to prevail in my life. God's word is what it is that, that, that has right in my life. There's no legal rights outside of Christ that belong to a son and daughter of God in Christ Jesus. I need for you to, I need for y'all to understand this. There is no legal right outside of the rights of Christ of what the blood of Jesus that speaks better things over you and me that has a right and an impact to your life. That violates the power of his blood and the working of the spirit of who you now are in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. But my word today to you is this. How do you know it's not a test? How do you know that what you're going through? How do you know that in this moment, God's not testing you? You know, God is concerned about you. Do you know God? cares about your character do you know God is developing every single one of us each and every day but are we going to be like the ch children of Israel that robbed ourselves from the promised land that robbed themselves from the promised land because we're so focused upon seeing the giants we're so focused upon not believing it, it's it's available and possible for us that we begin to murmur and complain because, <laughs> because of the daily bread of what it is that we, we partake of every single day, not thinking that Jesus isn't enough. Is Jesus enough? Is the Lord enough in your life? And do you trust his plan and his process of everything that he's working in your life for your good? All things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Emphasis, love God. See, if you love God, you trust God. If you love God, you believe God. If you love God, you're not doubting him. All things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. That means obedience to what it is he tells you to do, even if he says, be still. Watch and see my hand move for you shall and will see, see the salvation of the Lord come nigh unto you. You just remain faithful even when it looks like nothing's happening. You remain faithful and you stay and you stand doing what it is I call for you to do even when it looks like and it doesn't match up with, with, with even your own dream. How do you know that your own dream how do you know that your own dream is, is not carnal? See, the flesh wants a lot of things. The flesh wants everything. The flesh wants everything, especially the applause of man. The flesh wants the worldly desires. The flesh wants the money, the fame, the houses, the cars. And I get it. Those are nice things. Not to say that you can't have it. Not to say that God won't do it. But that, is, that should never be the leading of your heart. Because here's where and what it is I'm speaking about today is this. How do you know that God is not testing your life right now? 
how do you know that what you what you say out of your mouth you very well could be cursing and speaking against what God is doing all because it don't look like what you perceived and thought it would be what if God has a greater plan what if God is doing in your life something more amazing that you can even imagine and or fathom and or think? What if God has something so beautiful and so powerful and so magnificent and so paramount beyond your own belief system? What if God has something so amazing that it will blow your living mind of what it is and how it is he shall and will do? But even if he don't, are you still going to remain faithful to the call? But even if he don't, are you still going to do what he told you to do? Even if he don't come through. How do you know you're not being tested? See, we can be like the children of Israel and, and, and be out here in the wilderness. While God's providing and making a way each and every day, we always say that's still not enough. I don't like that, God. Who are we to say how it is and what it is? God chooses to do in our life. Who are we to test God? Who are we to argue with the Lord? And who are we to murmur and complain? See, and I have to eat this too. See, because the Lord checked me and is checking me, my heart. So I'm not preaching to you something that I'm not being tested by myself. Because the Lord rebuked me not too long ago and he says son what difference does it make is this it about is this about you or is it about me what difference does it make son what it looks like is this about you or is it about or is it about me your life is to bring me glory and you let me do what with your life what it is i choose to see but we don't want to hear messages like that <laughs> We don't want to be tested like that because we want control. So how do you know that you're not being tested in this season? How do you know that what it is you think and how it is you perceive things to be? How do you know that very well, that very well could be contrary to what it is and how it is God may be using your life in this season and moment? But can you remain faithful and obedient to the call of God even in this time? so that he builds the character in you so that as he builds you and as he strengthens you because if your character is not built if you are not strengthened and if you don't have the mindset to steward the more of where it is he wants to take you and bring you into you would not only hurt yourself but you're going to hurt people down the road that's why god needs to get those things those 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 worldly desires he needs to get them out of you the lust of the flesh, he needs to get them out of you. See, because the devil will use the, the, your worldly desires and your wants and your needs. He will set you up. He don't mind for you to get more followers and, and bigger people because the more you grow, if you have unsettled things within your life, the more you grow and the higher you go, the, the bigger and the harder the fall of what it is that will come down the road if you do not resolve and settle this issue. Your character is being built. Take this test and pass it and set it and settle it in your heart. That no matter where it is and no matter what it is and how it is God is moving and using your life for this time and moment. Trust the process. Trust the plan because he's working and getting things out of you, preparing you and taking you to the other side of the greater, of the more of what he has in store for your life to bring him glory. Because the, the position and the posture of your heart should always be. Not my will, but your will be done. My Lord and my God, my life belongs to you. May you get glory from my life. Whether I see and or agree or think it's supposed to be. But trusting and knowing that I'm in your perfect will, in your perfect plan, obedient to your command and what it is you told me to do. No matter what it looks like see brothers and sisters a lot of times it's the flesh and the worldly desires that sometimes will be the downfall down the road so pass the tests 